we're pledged here that when the uh, the various candidates for the Democratic nomination come out with a big plan, we want to address that in a serious fashion to incentivize them to do more of it. And uh, mm-hmm. today, Cory Booker has his big gun control proposal, which has a lot to it. We're not going to touch on everything, but it involves sitting down for an interview, getting a license, establishing a national database to register and track guns. Uh, it has a limit on purchases, one handgun uh, a month, a, a number of different components like this. Um, what did you think about uh, his plan? It, it certainly seems to go a little bit farther than other plans that we've seen. Mm-hmm. Actually, the first thing I thought of was a classic Simpsons episode where Homer Simpson wants to buy a gun and is subjected to a waiting period. And he said, oh, waiting period, but I'm mad now. <laughs> um, I think that waiting period to purchase- <laughs> That's great. I think a waiting period to purchase guns is is complete common sense. I grew up in a part of the country where everybody has guns. I grew up with guns in my house. Um, my dad is a hunter. He hunts and uses them as a as tools, and we would eat the things that he killed. So I have a full understanding of the way that guns can be used as important tools, especially to rural people and especially to people who are rural and don't have a lot of money. They're important for sustenance. But at the same time, I think that there is nothing wrong with making sure that people have have that people who have an instrument that is literally designed to kill uh, are of sound mind and that are capable of wielding that instrument responsibly. And I also think that you know I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about the Parkland kids and how huge an uprising it seemed after the shooting in uh, February of 2018. I was thinking about how huge it felt at the time and how little has actually changed. Now, we have gotten hearings in Congress about gun control. We did elect um, Lucy McBath in Georgia's sixth, I believe, unseated Karen Handel, who was like very pro gun, and Lucy McBath was uh, like, she ran against guns. So we're seeing really encouraging things happening, but we didn't really see anything huge happening commensurate to the uprising after Parkland. So it's really encouraging me, I think, just for morale to see a major 2020 candidate using this issue as something that's front and center. Because it makes us feel, as people who care about this, like something is actually getting done, that it's not just window dressing, that it's not just uh, political point scoring. So I'm I'm pretty happy with the fact that Booker has started this conversation and I hope it continues with other candidates. Uh, I agree, and this is a, a the sort of topic that I'm sure he's gonna get attacked on uh, from the right. Uh, there's no confiscation of firearms or anything like that, but they will they will spin it that way. And what do you think about from him? I mean, not to say that he hasn't had other proposals, but this is the first one in a while, a big one. And it's an area that I haven't seen a lot of action from other candidates on. Him choosing to focus on this particular topic, what do you think about that strategically? I think strategically, it's really smart. It's something that a lot of Democratic voters care about, as we saw in 2018. And it's something that Cory Booker obviously cares about if he cares about connecting with Democratic electorates. So I think it's a really brilliant move, especially I would love to hear him talking about it, though. That's mm-hmm. that, I think that's the final piece of this. Like I like what I saw when I was reading about it today, but I'd love to hear what he has to say. And I would love to see him debate somebody who disagrees with him on it and see him hold his own in the debate. Exactly, and, I, and I'm assuming that you know we might might not get much talk of climate change in the debates as I'd want, but the guns have got to come up at least a couple of times, hopefully. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.